Hey guys, Rory is here. Welcome back to Hacknet. <laughs> it's been a long time since I last played Hacknet. I don't even remember what I was doing. Let's check my emails. Okay, so I think I was just getting missions from here? Yeah, so I was still here. I, if I can, I want to try and finish this game today. I don't know if that's going to be possible, because I don't know how long this game is. But I feel like we're getting pretty close. I feel it. <laughs> Whatever the case, let's see what we've got here. Locate or create decryption software. A new company has come out with some new file encryption software. It has locked up a bunch of previously very open code to us with it. The algorithm doesn't seem as bad as what we've faced in the past, but there's no solver out for it yet. This contract will have you solve the problem however you want, but we will need a file decrypted. Right, I see. Ghosting the vault. DEC Solutions has recently finished their new DEC encryption suite, basically a file encryption package. We have a file that we want to look at that's been locked by this encryption. I've thrown a copy of it up on our Crossroads server, a non-secure dumping ground for all CSEC users, as encrypt underscore source dot deck. Dot deck is a file extension that this new encryption generates, by the way. <laughs> you might want to take a look at the file itself first. The company's website is pretty barren of anything useful, but if you dig a bit, you might find something to help. Once you're in, try scanning to see if the network goes deeper. Right. Once you have it decrypted, upload it to the CSEC drop server. Okay, so we've already got the crossroad. Oh no, we don't have that server. Ooh, okay. We already have the public drop, yeah. And then the DEC solutions website, all the way down the bottom here. Cool. Okay, quickly I'm just going to have a look at the CSEC crossroad server. Do I have a login for this? I don't. Damn it. I'm going to have to probe it. Ah, open ports required for hack. None. So can I just port hack it? <laughs> okay. Wonderful. <laughs> nice. So encrypt source.dick. That's the one I think that we need. They've also got this encode one. I wonder. They've also got a couple of other dicks here too. I will just quickly, just in case I need to, uh, download encrypt source.dick. Alrighty, let's go have a look at the DEC Solutions web server. Right, it just has this little infographic. <laughs> Not very useful to us. Ah, uh, well let's probe that system. I've got a firewall and I need both of these cracked. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't need anything special for the firewall, I just need to solve. Oh no, that's not solve, it's analyze, isn't it? Let's just do it. Oh, okay, they've got no... They've got no tracer. All good, we can just take our time with analyzing it. The password's encrypt. There we go. There we go. Oh. Oh, I did it like one second too early. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? We have this test build, pb... pdb, sorry, dot deck. Uh, that's in interesting. So there's these three DEC files. There's a readme. Haha, <laughs> ha, made you look. Wow. Ah, <laughs> oh, Why are this... Miss Kelly's grade 7 class is studying frickin... where is it? Human Centipede as their film. I don't... no. I don't agree with even the concept of that happening. So just looking at the staff memo that's encrypted with this DEC encryption, it's just numbers for now, but there's definitely something... This is some sort of header thing, which probably tells you something about the information that's in here. So deciphering the numbers here would help you decipher the numbers here. Hmm. I wonder. I don't see anything on this page here, but let's scan... Oh, there is a network attached. DEC Solutions Mainframe. I'm gonna guess this one is way harder, yeah, to crack. Okay. So that's that one. Oh, okay. They don't have any tracker. <laughs> there we are. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Let's have a look at their file system. Oh, so yeah, there's a there's a few files here. I'll just check the home first. <laughs> nice. Okay, maybe there's something in one of these staff folders. We've got a couple of text files, and we've got some more encrypted stuff. Decryptor memo. Hmm. 
<clears throat> sorry, decipher memo. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 going to be a pretty easy one to use by the looks of it. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Does he have the? F he doesn't have the. Doctor Lee Tro does not have the thing himself. <laughs> so yeah, this A carry just has it in their files. Wow. So, yeah, so whoever A carry is, thank you. <laughs> SCP uh, decipher. Move that into my bin, and now I can just at will decipher, and then I can go D E C E test build dot D E C. There we go. <laughs> decipher that. There we go. <laughs> I actually just deciphered it into their own folders as well. That's funny. <sighs> you can have two instances of decipher running at the same time. You have just enough RAM. Well, whatever the case, I don't think there's anything else useful, so let's RM star the... Oh, wait, not the bin. Go to log, and then RM star. There we go. Now we go into our own files. Go to home. And then decipher encrypt oopsies encrypt dot or underscore source dot dig. There we go. So now we just need to So it's just home encrypt source dot cs. Oh Oh wait, is this is this the way you encrypt files? So this will encrypt stuff to DEC. Oh I wonder if this actually works. I wonder if some of the like CS stuff that's around on you know on their systems. I wonder how much of the Hacknet systems actually work technically. Let's go to the public drop server and we'll upload home forward slash uh it was encrypt source.cs. There we go. Let's see if that was all we needed to do. Yeah, let's send that reply. Yay! <laughs> Contract successful. Alright, so we can just go back to here. We've, we're done. <laughs> and now what? We have this track an encrypted file. Here we go. I thought this might be related. We think we've located a way to track down where DEC encrypted files were encoded. We have a password locked file and we want it opened. There should be enough leads for you to go on. Cool. So yeah, we've actually unlocked one of the other locked missions as well. But uh, I think they, they were probably locked because we couldn't actually do them, because we didn't have what we needed. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> that one of them looks like it was that way. Apparently DEC encrypted files store the IP where they were encoded, uh, with some misc messages in the encoded headers. Right, right. Presumably for debug purposes or something, but to us it looks like a wide open security vulnerability. <laughs> Which is great, because we have something we need decoded, and we have no idea what the password for it is. So first step, find a way to read these headers. We had a bit of dig around and found out that these that one of the DEC Solutions employees might have a way to decode headers without knowing the password for, of a file. Oh, I see. Go take a look around on his end and reply if you find anything useful. We'll have more for you after that. Oh, so there's a specific computer. Joseph Scott's Battle Station. Oh, probe system. And then web server worm on 80. There we go. Wonderful. Cool. Okay, let's have a look at this file system. <laughs> I always look through all the log things, just have a quick read. I try and include each file for a few seconds, at least, so that people can see it, and if they want to read it, they can read through it, and I just skip past. Read it myself, you know. <laughs> Most of these, uh, a fair chunk of these have been duplicated, so I don't think it's worthwhile spending, the t you know, sp spending your time reading through these <laughs> documents. That's dumb. <laughs> this is a freaking rat battle. <laughs> well done. Nice. <laughs> oh dear. So there I was in this hallway, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is kind of how I feel about the current, like, by using this website, you agree to, to this, this, and this. It's like, I wouldn't have agreed to it if I had known about that before I clicked on your website. <laughs> it's not fair to, to, you know, cut people off like that. <laughs> I like the meta-ness of this message. Why am I blogging into a text file? 
<laughs> yeah. But anyway, I think, I believe this is it here. DEChead.exe. So, for instance, I wonder if I try decipher, and then I try decipher, oh, uh, decipher.dec. I'm assuming it's going to be like password required. Nope. Apparently not. Is it just the exe file? It's just the exe. Okay, never mind. SCP <laughs> uh, DEC head dot exe. There we go. So now I believe we can get the password eat nice and easy. I think um, all I have to do now is reply. Yeah. Cool. So that was like the first stage of that mission. Neat. Got something good. Alright, the file we're looking at is up on the crossroads S C sorry, C S E C encode underscore one. It's the one that I thought <laughs> was the I thought we might have to actually encode that, but it was already encoded, so I was a little bit confused. Oh, we renamed it so people wouldn't go around messing with it. Huh. It was originally named WinCE underscore firmware specs dot D E C when we got it, if that helps. Anyway, read the headers of that. Find out where it was encoded and go track the password down. Reply to this with the password in the email and we'll take care of the rest. Cool. So yeah, that's just the crossroad servers again. I did see that, but I did not download it, so... Uh, SCP... Actually... I don't even need to really SCP, do I? I just go... Uh, DEC hit... And then go... CSEC encode. One dot dick. There we go. Um... So, okay, so we did get the information. I was like, what am I reading? So the encrypted file is that encryption header, WinC firmware specifications. Encryption source IP, this number. So that's just an IP. So if I connect to 168.61.82.24, oops, 45. Oh, so I'm down here. Microsoft, I think I said Microsoft before. Microsoft Workhorse Server 4. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's crack this, crack this baby. <laughs> Just wow. Bounce on 21 first. And then SQL. Uh, it's, it's slow, it's slow, it's fine. Um, and then there's the web server worm on 80. Can I? No, not enough space. Okay, as soon as one of them is done, there we go. So if I disconnect, and I reconnect, wonderful, okay. <laughs> what the hell? So these are all log files of different things and their compression, or their encryption I should say. Crap, what was the name of the file again? It was something like Win, it started with something like WinC. This was it, this was it here. FirmwareSpecs.dec, password beep beep. Okay, <laughs> I'll just check the last couple, just to see if there's anything funny. God damn it. <laughs> Whatever the case, so it was beep beep. Send. Yay! <laughs> Ooh, flags for crit critical contract. Before we do that, I'm just gonna quickly have a look at that file. <laughs> just out of curiosity. I probably can't even read a PDF, can I? I don't think this system is capable of reading PDFs. Well, well, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, we can. Okay. <laughs> Seems relatively official. I just skimmed that. I don't know if there's anything particularly interesting in there. But whatever the case, we've got contract successful. But now we have the CSEC admins flagged for critical contract. Agent. Administrators have flagged your account with permissions to accept a critical contract. This is listed as CSEC on the listings page. Be aware, the accepting of this contract may be either time consuming or require confidentiality and a separation from other projects for a time, and should be undertaken only with the expectation that other contracts and possibly CSEC services may be unavailable for its duration. Oh, okay, well, maybe before I do that, maybe do, do I try, do I want to do the other missions? There are still some entropy missions I haven't done, to be fair. Is it this Project Junebug? It doesn't say CSEC, but whatever. An incredibly delicate situation has come up, requiring the involvement of a skilled, anonymous, outside agent willing to be responsible for some questionable actions to greatly help an individual in need. I'm gonna guess that this is it. But actually, wait, I'm just gonna have a look around as well. 
<laughs> Aspiring Rider, I don't think that's gonna be one. This became available before. Right, so this just needs the password. Like the, yeah, because we got the thing before that allows us to get the password. I have a feeling it's this Project Junebug. Let's just accept it. Hacker, this isn't a normal request and we're not going to treat it as such. We've been asked to perform a euthanization. Eh? Obviously, we sent out a few others to dig up data on it, and a few from outside groups so as not to raise suspicion, some time ago. And largely speaking, it's come back all clear. It seems the man in question, one Elliot Witt, is hospitalized in considerable pain and against his wishes has been denied the option of death. Oh, right, I see what they mean. Oh. A failed attempt by his family earlier has prevented them from performing subsequent efforts until a member proposed this option. It seems the pacemaker he is fitted with allows remote access. <laughs> okay. It seems the pacemaker he is fitted with allows remote access with proper authorization, and they believe this may be an avenue to fulfill this request. Naturally, given the nature of this request, we can accept that you may not want to be involved. Reply with deny in your response, and we will remove you from the project. If you do decide to help us with this matter, you should know that it will likely take some amount of investigation and testing. Given that, as far as we know, this has never been attempted. We recommend starting with the target's medical record, identifying the chip, looking for its manufacturers, and going from there. So, not much information. Target Elliot Witt. Action. Euthanization. Alright, let's, let's begin. Probe system. Ah. Requires four out of these five, and it requires both proxy and firewall uh, be removed. Okay, so I've been around and I've added some shells. Let's try again. This could be quite an ordeal, but let's go straight away with these. Oh, okay, it's not got a tracker, tracer, whatever. Wonderful. Sweet. <laughs> okay, so we'll search for Elliot. Um, okay, well, <laughs> it was a wit, wasn't it? Like that? Wit Elliot. There we go. Perfect. See, I thought it might be. It might be like that. I spelt Elliot correctly, but it didn't find it. All good. Due to recurring and critical arrhythmic problems in the patient's heart, they have been fitted with a pacemaker that can allow some fine-tuning to account for unknown variables without invasive surgery. Pacemaker connection ID. Oh. Okay, so let's try and connect to... Oh, let's connect it to the documentation and notes first. Connect. Okay, so this is Biotech's Callus Biotech. Okay, well, we've got this one attached now. I'm, I'm gonna connect to the pacemaker if I can. Ugh, that's weird. Yeah, we don't yet have... What the? Oh, no, so we can probe it. Huh. But it's just medical services. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna need to find the login. Uh, so if we go back to this, this one here, we need to probe the system. Uh, let's try the firewall straight away. It's gonna... I'm expecting soon to have a tracer. Yep. I just need- I need all four of those cracks. Solve. B-I-O-G. E-L. Biogel? Sure. Um, SSH. 22. Oh my god, I don't know if I have time. FTP bounce on 21. I might have to disconnect. SMTP, oops, on 25. And we've got web server worm on 80. Yeah, I don't think I have time for this. Shit, it's gonna be tight. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, no, I don't have time. I can't wait. Damn it. <laughs> shit. Uh, that was biotech. Let's see if that's all still... Oh, and web server worm's still going. Wonderful. No, I can just port hack. <laughs> I forget that that's how that works. Perfect. Yeah, I forget that once you start running something, if you leave and come back, it's it, it still runs, even though the tracer stops. <laughs> yes! View file system. Oh, right, of course. So we've got remote tools, security and clearances, and firmware and patching. Firmware for the chip is written by Eidolon Soft version control. Queries and updates are handled through the essential server, so we're probably going to need this one. Um, so once again, add note. Cool, alrighty, well, let's go back and let's, uh, remote tools. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, it looks like we just need to follow that 
um, that IP address. Oh, the, I know what this is. <laughs> Creative writing assignment two. I just, I was like, what is this? And I looked down here and saw, you killed your father, John. You are the demon. <laughs> and I suddenly <laughs> I knew exactly what it was. Okay, let's connect to that IP. One on one dot one oh five dot. Actually, I probably could have just typed up, but all right. all good, all good. Okay, so probe this one. Does this one have a tracker? It does. But it's quite slow. Cool. Now disconnect and reconnect. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, let's go straight to projects. Kellis BT is the one that I think that's the type of pacemaker. So wait, does it want me to do a cycle test? Does it want me to upload this to the person live with the friggin' pacemaker in them? So it's gonna just start beating at different random speeds and, and kill them through that? That's a horrible way to die. Pacemaker firmware cycle test. Oh dear. Well, I'll read. I'll see if there's any other things here. And see if there's, you know, if there's something else theoretically that I could do instead. Okay, so there's also, this is a login here. Alright, I'm gonna add notes. Okay, so I got the password. Oh dear. Well, this is gonna be pretty horrific, I think. So we got E admin. Oops, E had min 86 oh what did I jump the gun I don't see anything else that would be useful to me here I feel like I've been given all the information I need hmm I feel like I'm just missing one thing and that is I need one extra login detail and I've been through all the different steps Ah, oh, here we go. That's what I was missing. There's another system attached to this one. Production asset server. Okay, let's probe. <laughs> there we go. Disconnect and then reconnect. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so hopefully there's something here that we can use. Okay. Callus Media Pack. Can't get into that. It's just, it's just garbage. <laughs> KBT port test. Here we go. KBT port test. .exe. And then we got the README here. Okay, well. That is, that's all I believe we need. Probe system. And I use port test 104. This is not like any other test or like port cracker thing that I have yet. So... Cool, that worked! <laughs> so now we can just get, we can port hack it. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Cool, so, view monitor. Oh god. <laughs> well... Uh, login. We have this, yeah, we can actually log in. We have the E admin. And then, what was it? Oh, I've got it written there. 1086. Yeah, there we go. Administrative firmware. If I just activate this firmware, that won't change much, will it? Because that's just like the, the normal firmware. What I need to do is I need to upload the cycle test and then activate the firmware. All right, so let's let's try this. If we go upload um, home slash, what was it called? Uh, if I go tab, there it is, pacemakers firmware cycle test. Um, so the transfer worked, but what happens, like if I go open this up again, will it pop up here? So wait, if I go back, if I go back here, if I go to the file system, So the cycle test is just here. I'm assuming there's a location that we're supposed to put the cycle, the uh, firmware active. Okay, I think that's where we need to put it. We need to like drag it into, oopsies. 
Yeah, so I, I didn't upload it quite right. So we need to upload upload that to um, forward slash kill dot dll. Okay, that didn't work. I mean, it worked, but it didn't work the way I was intending. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so I've set the cycle test in here. Now let's go. Let's go kill a man. Firmware, cycle test, activate this firmware, confirm, activation. Here we go. Jesus Christ. Well, shit. Ow, my ears. Okay, before we do anything else, let's just quickly arm star our log. <laughs> arm star, quickly get the hell out of here. And uh, go back home. <gasps> let's reply to this. Okay, reply. Oh my god. Contract successful. Pleased with your work, eh? Bit foundation. So we've finally got another message from from the from bit well this one's not from bit this is from v hey so this is a bit unorthodox but i pulled some strings you'll be the one who did you'll be the one that did the bit contract before looking for what happened there what that sentence doesn't make sense in my head <laughs> i'm after some more information and i wanted the same person on it if you're getting this it means you've just finished your assignment so your assigned contract so we're good to go to be frank, the term pulling strings with the CSEC isn't something you really use lightly. <laughs> and in this case, it's even more so. You got results fast, and I want you on this case too. More collaboratively this time. If I sound confident, you'll want to join in here. I've good reason for it. There's a very substantial incentive waiting for you on the CSEC asset server. Look for bin tk tracekill.dec. Decrypt it with the password dx. 122DX. Get a copy and reply me back. As always, the admins are paranoid about their security, so it'll be anonymously routed back through their system to me. Whatever. <laughs> Just reply here when you're ready and I'll let you know what's next. CSEC Asset Server. See, it's the one we already have. So we're looking for Trace Kill. Okay. Okay, so we've got TK and Trace Kill. Okay, SCP Trace Kill. So wait, can we use the software to stop a trace that's actively happening on us? Hmm. So if we go decipher tracekill.dc with the password... Oh my god, I've already forgotten what it is. DX122DX, wasn't it? Capital DX at that time. Fingers crossed. That looks promising. <laughs> cool, that worked. So now if we go move tracekill.exe, there we go, perfect. Cool, so now I just moved tracekill into our bin folder, so I just need to reply. Cool, that's done. Excellent. Tracekill, as the name suggests, diverts active traces against you while it's running. It should make your work much easier. Right, yeah. <laughs> Let's begin. I've done some digging after the last set. Actually, before I even read this, I'll add this here. It's right in the middle. But first things first, I'm gonna go to this crazy file dump here. Hex squad. If I, if I can, can I do this now? Can I just run this? Oh, wait, but it takes up all my freaking RAM. I can't run anything else. So if I have that active and I try to do web server worm 80, yeah, not insufficient memory. Hmm, yeah, I don't know if that's going to help me with this one. <laughs> Unless I just don't know how to use it yet properly, which I'll probably learn in this mission. So, back to the email. Let's begin. I've done some digging after the last set. You saw that message too. He knew what was going on. Anyway, just the idea that whatever happened was linked to his work was enough to start with. I did some tracking and ended up with a bit of a list of his servers or relays. Can't know how many of them are just virtual boxes running off the same machine, but it's a good start. 
The most promising one is linked at the end of this. It's a personal work server. Something he was using to privately host copies of the version control repositories he was working on, apparently. This itself might be a clue. Who keeps the backups of a corporate VC solution? Only three cases I can think of. Either you're responsible if they frick it up, and you're surrounded by incompetence and you want to be sure, you need your backups and logs for legal reasons, or you're worried about something and want records in case something goes down. Whatever's the case, this seems like the place to start digging. Want to take a look? I've had a poke around but didn't turn up anything substantial. Can't decrypt the repo dumps. Let me know if you find anything. Send over the IP address of anything strange if you dig up a link. Okay, so let's go here. Probe system. So, proxy is detected. I need a shell. God damn it. Let me use one of his own systems. <laughs> let's put a shell on here. I'm just gonna do the one. Let's see how that goes. Because I kind of want to run... I want to do this. See, I think with that you could probably have the trace kill. Yeah, if I do that and then I click overload. <laughs> nice, nice. Suppression active. That's interesting. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> so I can very slowly get rid of the proxy. Come on. There we go. But now that that's done, the problem is, is that I can't do any, use any of these ports yet. So I can just... I could do this. And then start doing this. Uh, SQL mem corrupt on 14... 3, SMTP 25. Wait, did I do all of them? Oops. I accidentally did all of them. <laughs> it's all good. And then once I've done that, I can. Uh, wait, is it that? Yeah, trace kill. Oh. As soon as that goes away. There we go. Cool. I'm gonna guess that this is one of those places that's gonna keep resetting. So having the trace kill is necessary once I get on. Uh, but let's have a look. Oh my god. Oh wait, this looks like something... I recall something about repo. Okay, so let's SCP that. Anything else in here? No, okay, that was legitimately it. But we can scan now. No, nothing attached? Okay. Okay, we can turn off the trace kill now. <laughs> and let's decipher this repo archive. No, okay, requires password. So let's use the HEC head thing. Oh no, it's DEC head. Whoops. DEC head. And, uh, HN. Oops. Oh, what the? Yeah, I was gonna say, what? There we go. Cool, there we go. NTEC TM repository backup. Oh. Source IP. Connect to... 156.151.5, oops, 59.35. Inviola- what? Inviolability detected. So we're here. Intic external contractor relay server. Inviolability detected. I've never heard that word before in my life. Whatever, let's probe this. Oh my god, what the hell. I'm gonna assume that I can't do anything with this. Let's just see what happens if I try and analyze the firewall. <laughs> okay, I can actually trace kill this as well. Actually, while I'm doing this as well, I should overload. Cool, solved the firewall and got rid of the proxy. Okay, we'll close the shell. And I'm gonna have to try and do this quickly. But open ports required for crack as changing. Do I just do all of them? <laughs> Will that work? Yeah, I might need to just use this, get this IP address and send that through on the email. Yeah. Is that enough? Hmm, I've been around for a while, but I've never seen anything like this. It's a bit early to call it unbreakable, but this is new, different. Hmm. Intic, huh? They make what? A pretty mediocre antivirus? If they were selling whatever this is, they'd be making a fortune. 
Oh, I see what they I see what they mean. Yeah, basically unbreakable port system somehow. Hey, look, their front end stuff doesn't have anything this fancy. I'm gonna get digging from the web survey and see at what point this new stuff starts. It looks like it's deep enough in that they're trying to hide it for some reason. No idea why. It looks like it'll be a huge hassle to get past. Companies love that stuff. This is new and flashy too. This is suspicious as hell. <laughs> Take a look on your end and see how far you can get in there. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like a way better lead than I was ever hoping for. Ping me back when you think you've seen as much as you can. Be thorough. Uh, so we've got another server here. God damn it. <laughs> Entech Security Solutions. Oh good, it doesn't require any special thing there. But it does require four ports. Okay. There we go. Run that. And then I'll run a trace kill as soon as I arrive. <laughs> okay, go away password found. Actually, can I? No, I can't run it yet. Go away, password found. There we go. Cool. View file system. <laughs> Wait, I can scan, of course. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, there are two nodes. Oh god, this is getting cluster. Like a cluster frick down here. Oh, there's, there's a bunch of them. From here, we've unlocked... Um, we unlocked Intic Mail Server. We unlocked Intic Zeus. And in work en workstation core. Let's go over to the mail server. Okay, can't violate this one. I don't have a login either, so can't use that. Let's go to Zeus. Zeus also can't be cracked in, but I can go into the en workstation core. Okay, only requires one crack, and it's just the SQL one. Okay, uh, fourteen thirty three. Trace kill as soon as that's done. Actually, no, I'm gonna need a port hack, aren't I? Uh oh. Okay. Trace kill. This is gonna be a tight one. Shit. Okay, go away, password found. Go away, password found. Go away. Close. For God's sake. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh! That was, that was a friggin' dodgy. Oh dear. Silly. Well, there's nothing else in here, so I'm just gonna scan again. God damn it, there's so many. I can't keep track of them down here. <laughs> okay, so we got an Intech Workstation 4. Can't use that one. So it's a 1, 3, 4, 8, and 12. Well, here's the 8. 8 it doesn't, isn't protected. 12 is protected. 1 is protected. Okay, so the only one that's not protected is 8. Uh, let's do these two first, so... Oh, I need three cracks. Medical... Oh, that's right, I got that medical services one, didn't I? Oh, I forgot that was one that we unlocked. That's cool. If I click overload... Okay, yep. As I thought, let's get that trace kill down straight away. Uh, soul... Oh, no, analyze. Okay, that should be the solution. 4TLVT1. Cool, now I have to do the rest. And, you know, quickly. <laughs> Um, okay, let's get SSH going straight away, and then we'll get uh, web server worm on 80, and then what was that one called? Shit, uh, exe, is it kbt port test on 104? I might have gone too slow, because kbt port test does take a long time. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then I'll have to go trace kill as soon as we get in. Oh, I hate that you can't just do it straight away. Go away password found. <laughs> you found it already. Now leave. There we go. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Okay, so we got something here. A little bit more. There's a store. Comp bin. Medstreamref.txt. Oh, here we go. We've got two IP addresses here. And then we've got this Prometheus as well. Hacknet underscore netcore dot DLL. So the system that we're using is, fe is mentioned on here. That's interesting. Well, we've got these IP addresses. Let's connect to one of them. Connect 
Okay, can't get into this one. That's all good. Okay, this one's also not connectable. Wait, do I have a? Oh, I have it. I have Prometheus. So this pass. This is the password, is it? I try and log in. NX. Okay, that failed. I assumed this would be a password. Maybe I just try. If I just try admin. Oh, that worked. Okay, wonderful. I didn't try admin. <laughs> But I, yeah, I got this password, and I was like, how do I use that? I don't have the username. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, well, I just got an email. Just got an email now. Hacknet project. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> this looks like it's... Hacknet... This might be like Orwell. <laughs> We've been playing Orwell recently as well. Is Hacknet essentially... Like an Orwell supercomputer system that allows you to connect to anything and do pretty much whatever you want around the internet. Oh, and here we go, NSIC Inviability Project. Yeah, here we go. Paired with the HackNet Project, which seeks to demonstrate the flaws in current security systems, NSIC shows clearly why it should and will be the new accepted minimum standard of true digital security and confidence. So, HackNet and Inviability are to be used in tandem to showcase, <laughs> you know, it's like they're trying to um, make everyone insecure in their passwords and their systems and then immediately provide a solution. <laughs> oh my god. Right, well I don't think there's anything, actually I'll just scan real quick. I think that only added the mail server which we already had. Okay. So. Let's go here. Propagation. Are you seeing this network? There's that new security scattered about on almost everything. But I'm picking my way through it. There are still a few holes, but progress is slow. I've attached the IP of what I'm looking into now. From the side I'm coming at it from, I can't see any cracks in it yet. Are you having any luck? If you find its admin pass, reply to this email with it. I get the feeling that serves the key to where Bit fits into all of this. The talk of this hacknet project showing up is kind of worrying too. Have you ever heard of that? A whole OS rewrite. We can look into that later. For now, see if you can find a way into this relay. We'll work out our next step after that. I'd probably look around their production and store servers. Prometheus and Romulus, etc. A way in might be anywhere though. Good luck, V. Something we haven't done is we- oh, I can turn- I can turn this off. I haven't checked for EOS devices. EOS device scan? Oh, there's two phones. Intech Test 01 ePhone 4S. So there's two test phones. Um, probe the system of the first one. Requires three cracks. Oh, that's right. No, that's it's um. Don't isn't it just Alpine? <laughs> God damn, it, that's so dumb. But great, it's great. Oh, in Stanford at intech.com.act. And we've got a password here as well for that. Okay, let's try the other phone just really quick as well. Okay, I think we can close the scan EOS devices now. Let's go to the mail server. Here we go, log in. So it's in Stanford. And we've got Murloc 33. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Intec current projects and, di and direction, sorry. Greetings and welcome to Intec. We're currently working on two big projects and you'll be getting more detailed project introduction for your team shortly, but this email is an overview of our current direction and how the projects fit together. The first is NSEC, a completely new computer security suite, designed to revolutionize computer security. Human error will always be the problem area of any security system, but we believe it should be the only problem area. By removing and minimizing the potential for human error in the system, and using our new proprietary systems, digital security is no longer a job, it's a choice. <laughs> right, I see, I see. Hacknet OS is the companion project for NSEC, written to demonstrate existing problems with security and provide a strong value proposition for anyone to upgrade to what we believe is truly the best security option. God, what a loaded sentence. <laughs> welcome to the Hacknet team. Hello and welcome to the Hacknet team. Due to the delicate nature of this project, much of your participation in the team will be kept isolated from other components in the project, and seeing complete assembled builds of the project will be rare, if ever. Because of this, we wanted to give everyone a bit more context as the project's overall goals. Hacknet or <laughs> Hackint 
Oh wait, this has been designed from the ground up as a groundbreaking computer security examination and penetration testing framework. Intec is producing this as a companion to its new digital security software suite, Insec, as a marketing and presentation device to demonstrate its superiority over conventional security packages. At its heart, Hacknet is a marketing device, yeah, but as an individual project is one of the most ambitious and powerful anti-sec tools ever created. As an anti-security, I'm assuming. Welcome to the team. I'm sure you'll agree it's an incredibly exciting project to be part of. Well, and now we've got Romulus password, wow, just in an email, just wow. I'll just check to see the last email, see if there's anything in here. Oh, I just had a good read of this. They mention here that builds of Hacknet come with a tracer to help find rogue builds of the of this Hacknet. That's what Bit asked us to delete right off the bat. This person who's complained, who's like, um, expressed concerns, sorry, uh, must be Bit, right? Because they're like, if used maliciously, this could be an extremely dangerous tool. Oh, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> well, those are all the emails. I can look at the file system, but I don't have... Oh. <laughs> so I have access to all these accounts, but if I try and open a file in one of them, it does not work. Uh, apparently in Stanford is the only one with, with messages, and if you try to open a message, you just get immediately disconnected. <laughs> Let's go to Romulus and log in. 12. What? Did I do it wrong? Or did I. Am I supposed to have capital A for admin? Okay, I'm gonna have to go back to that previous. I'm gonna have to go back to the mail server. Oh, it's not 1 2, it's L2. Okay, god damn it. There we go, that's better. Store, contractors. Oh, bit. There we go. So actually, Bit is one of the contractors. So he's not one of the people in the company. Okay. So the person who complained was not Bit. Um, important contract upload guide. <laughs> okay, so this little document here. <laughs> For a security company, they're really not very good at uh, keeping their security, their stuff secure. Okay, so Bit had reported back and had done a lot of work for this. I think the HN repo archive is what we already have, isn't it? Whatever the case, I'm going to download them both. Uh, we've also got this Dionix, I think. And they've been doing other work. I'm going to SCP hacknet underscore code link. We've got a Tija. Someone named Tija who is also doing work. Oh, they were working on the security tracer. Yep. Well, we have, um, we have some files which we could have a look at. We've also, I should also download this hacknet security tracer.dick. So let's do that really quick. Let's go back to our system and open up all these DEC. Okay, let's decipher this PH link prototype because this is the one that uh, Bit had been working on. Fingers crossed I don't need a password. I probably do. Yep. Okay. Okay, get the headers real quick for that. So this is the Heartlink prototype. So we've got an IP address there. Let's connect to it. There we go. Bitwise repo base. I don't remember if I've had this before. Oh, I did. I already had this. Damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, let's move to the next. Oop. Don't probe my own system. Get that one real quick. This will give us an IP of... The, uh, I don't remember which one this is. Dionix. Yep, Dionix. Oh. IP just X's. Okay. So this is Tija. Damn it, IP also secure. Is there anything else on this system that I didn't see? So yeah, we got this. We'll just try login with admin with this password. Intec external contractor relay server. Let's try login with admin and then AX. Yay! <laughs> wonderful. I like just using passwords instead of having to do all the cracking and stuff like that. Okay, so we've got Tija and Bit. So yeah, let's go into Bit. We've got heart.dec. Okay, well, let's SCP that DEC. <laughs> I don't really need to SCP it, but whatever. Let's try uh, DEC head on heart. So we've got Bitwise last words. Oh? 
Okay. Decipher heart. Does it require a password? Damn it. <laughs> Shit. Okay, well. I think we've reached an impasse. Oh, okay. Oh, so we just were supposed to reply with the admin pass. Okay. God damn it, I deleted it. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna have to rewrite write this down. God damn it, I had to write that down manually. My notes are broken. <laughs> okay, it's fixed. Wonderful. Okay, let's add this password. 889MSJ capital A. And then send. Oh, okay, we're getting close. Man, this has been a long recording. <laughs> this is exactly what I was hoping for. The place has been stripped clean, but for one encrypted file in Bits folder, as you've probably seen. But that file. I know how to open it. It's password he told a few of us a long time ago that works worked on a project with him. He sent us a message encrypted like this back then too. The password's Diving Sparrow. I've already read it. There's an email account I need to check out now too. I suggest you do the same. Download the file and decrypt it locally. Don't leave an open copy of that lying around. And contact me afterwards. It feels like we're reaching the truth and some action. Contact me once you've caught up and let's finish this. Yeah, I feel like we're so close. We're so close to the end. Uh, I already have a downloaded copy, so let's go here and... So it was Diving Sparrow. Decipher... Oops. Decipher... Heart... With, um... Diving... Oops, not dicing. Diving Sparrow. Fingers crossed. Yes, perfect. Oh wait, yeah, no, that's perfect, perfect. <laughs> Couldn't remember when exactly the password not, you know, password required comes up. Alrighty, well, let's have a look. Heart.txt. I'm writing this in faith that I told you this password, that you're the person I hope you are and because it's all I have to work with right now. Thank you for looking so far. It seems a lot to ask for that anyone will read this, but I guess I'm doing a lot of that lately. Right, yeah. To business then. If you are actually here then, well, that's already my worst case. And I have some hard requests to me. You must have run into the files on what Intec's up to, and I hope you feel the way I do about it. You've seen how good Insec is already. Incredibly so. And once it's polished up, I wonder how much of the freedom we have now will slip away. This is maybe actually fine. I'm fine with that, and on a lot of levels. I respect them trying to fix security and want it to work, even if it cripples what I'm best at. But not like this. The Hacknet project is the problem. It's great to make good security, it's even kind of okay to hold a lot of control over it and its usage. But breaking everything except what you've made isn't. <laughs> Before I knew it, I'd contributed too much to Hacknet. It was an incredible project, fun and challenging, and they just threw resources at it endlessly. <laughs> Amazing to work on, and I made something incredible. It's called Port Hack. <laughs> Basically, a sum of my knowledge and skill that opens doors just about anywhere. Wow. I got curious after a while and broke into the mainframe and put it all together. Maybe the first complete build that had been done of the project with a complete Port Hack wired in. Right. It's not so hard to see what happens from here. They complete this, Hacknet gets out somehow, the world's in total chaos, and our one chance to stop digital security from failing, from falling, sorry, into this insane monopoly slips away. What we have isn't perfect, and Intech security is good, but Hacknet ruins everything, and if we don't stop it now, it might be too late to stop it ever. The CEO's email account tells the rest, and that's the username and password. All right, all right, back to the mail server. Login. Oh, we could have almost seen that actually if we had looked hard enough. So wait, this is just RC, and then, there we go. New case, bit. Understood, I'll take care of it. Oh. Ah, details are attached, call him bit. So, someone realized that, yeah, a former employee's gone rogue and is threatening the project. Yeah. Ah. I've put out the order, expensive, but he will be dead within the week. Charged to your account as per normal. Good to have you on board. What exactly are your plans this time? He's important and well informed. Hmm. It's too late. Oh, wait. Ah. Oh. Dead? What the hell are you talking about? I wanted you to smash up his computers and arrest the guy, not freaking kill him. 
Call this off right now. This has gone far enough. I'll deal with it myself. The man's a genius. Even if he's against the project, I want him around. Find a way to stop it for God's sake. If you're serious about this, I'm holding you personally responsible. Don't frick with me here. And then this person says, It's too late. I can't stop it. It's anonymous. You need to be clear about wording if you want specific action taken. Oh dear. I'll read it in order. Mainframe access emergency. Something's come up. I need access to the mainframe to have a look around. I'll be investigating recent accesses and builds. So I need admin. Right, and that's the admin password. Okay, let's look at this. It's not too freaking late if he's not dead yet. Call this off right now. I'm revoking payment. This isn't what I hired you for. For God's sake. Personal value to the project aside, I'm not going to be a goddamn accessory to murder because of your stupid misunderstanding. The target is deceased. Payment will proceed as promised, or my employees may take issue with their clients. Uh-oh. What have you done? This isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I wanted, you freaking psychopath. Jesus Christ. Payment has been received and our business is, is concluded. Oh my god. <sighs> well, um, that was for the mainframe? What mainframe is that? Okay, I think I'm just supposed to reply to this. Yep. You've read it too. You know what this means. At the very least, I'm starting with doing whatever I can to finish what bit started, if this is how it ended. While you found a way into the contractor server, I was digging around their backups. They store them- I was digging around for their backups, sorry. They store them offline, but the server auto-connect to that net- but the server auto-connects to the net at set intervals to pull updates down from production servers so they stay up to date. With some clever patch pushing, I think I can get it up. Getting you a connection isn't simple, but I have a plan. I've re-rigged one of my old sequencing programs to time it all for you. It's something I used to use to coordinate takedowns and the like when working with friends. There's an uploaded a copy on the CSEC asset server called Sequencer. I think I already have that, actually. Let's just check. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Run it when you're ready. It'll signal me to bring the backup server up and pipe a connection through to you. You won't have long, but it should be enough while I keep it a lot while I keep it online. Get to their backup and wipe wipe out everything with the word hacknet in it. If Bit wants it gone, this is the best we can do. Yeah, I've already got the sequencer. Okay, so I might have to do this quickly. Um, so I think all I have to do is from here. It doesn't matter where I am. I just have to run sequencer, and then we can just activate. And that should connect me to the backup server. Oh, nearly, nearly. Okay. Uh. Wait, what? Um. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh. Do I have a. I don't have anything there. Damn it. <laughs> I don't have a friggin' proxy. Ah. So that's it there. I'm gonna have to go to this, go shell, oops. Go back to here. Um, probe system, oh my god. Quickly start overloading. Sol, oops, analyze. Wait, do I have a, I don't have a password, do I? I feel like I was supposed to have a password. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh god. I still don't have time for this. Um, okay, I think I can solve. Aim it, place. There we go. Um, SSH. Oh god. Uh, FTP. 21. What? Oh, the freaking proxy hasn't been done yet. Oh my god. Shit. I'm gonna run out of time. Okay, there we go. And then FTP. 21. And then web server worm, I think, at 80. Okay, and then SMTP, 25. God damn it. Close notes really quick into that. And then uh, SQL. Oh my god, I don't have I don't have enough time. 1433. Damn it. Uh, what else do I have? That's that's it, isn't it? Yeah. I think, wait, one, two, three, four, five, okay, I need to do that as well. Uh, KBT on 104. 
Oh, I can't. I can't. I have to do it after this finishes. There we go. Oh my god. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. That takes too long, the medical services one. No, I'm gonna have to dis disconnect. Shit. Damn it. <laughs> oh god, my system has changed its freaking theme. What the hell? Okay, back to our, our good theme. Try one more time. Sequencer. Okay, let's, this time, this time. Let's do this. Um, oh, actually, wait, before we do that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go into here. No, um, what about... Uh, the, 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 uh, I didn't do this in time. Why didn't I do this before? Um, <laughs> CFC re records repository. What one have I already unlocked? I'll just put one on here. I don't care. Um, go back here. Probe system. Okay, that was dumb. That was really dumb. That was a poor start. I have both overloads going. Solve. Actually, it's Emmet Place, isn't it? Solve. Emmet Place. <laughs> SSH. Oops. FTP. What? Oh, right. Proxy. God, this still takes ages. Okay, there we go. FTP. Nope. FTP. Are you freaking kidding me? 21. SMTP. 25. Web server worm on 80. I swear it's going faster than it did last time. I swear. Okay, and then it's uh, SQL. Minecraft on 14.33. And then it's uh, KBT on 104. Oh my god, go with that. Port hack, as soon as it's able. <laughs> the KBT one takes ages, it really sucks. Delete all hacknet related files, and then disconnect. Okay, there we go. Port hack. I wish I could use the tra trace kill thing, but I can't. This isn't a trace. Okay, file systems. Um, Arknight hacknet. Um, okay. Let's just uh, RM star. Go into here. RM star. I don't know if I can do two RM stars at the same time. Apparently I can. Um, let's just check if there's anything... Oh god. I don't think I can RM star that in time. Uh, DC. Did that work? Was that enough? <laughs> Change my theme again. <laughs> uh, let's see if that was enough. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and so it ends. As revenge, it's shallow to me. Just lashing out at what he was, and all too late to help him at all. But this felt right. I guess I should be more used to it. No one will notice, huh? Not except the ones who will be in a rage over the loss. No one's going to be thanking us, no matter how much damage it might have caused otherwise. Such is the way of things, I guess. You helped a lot, and I'm grateful. There's only so much I can do with this veil of anonymity kept on, and after that seems like a terrible time to shit it. So I'll see you back at CSEC. There's always chaos there. I'll find a way to pay you back soon enough. Thanks, really. And now we've got Bit, Terminal. So this was an automated email by Bit. Hey, I'm not sure if it's sensible to be writing this one first. If all's gone to plan, this should be basically the last you'll hear of me. Maybe the last anyone hears from me. But hey, this one's optimistic. If this ever gets sent to you, that's the best news I could hope for. <laughs> so thank you. I can't imagine it'll be easy. Or will have been easy? This tense is going to take some getting used to. There's still one last thing I want to ask of you. Not that I haven't asked way too much already. Port hack's not quite a standalone thing. It was once, but, well... You can probably understand now why this can't exist as something people can just pass around. Its core, heart, is the last piece left. It's built to be untamperable, but I've done what I can. This is my last request of far too many. Oh. Oh, I see. I see what he means. Can I do something with this? <laughs> okay, um... Wait, what? <laughs> let's, 
let's have a look at that again. So wait, what do we actually have to do with this? I don't... I don't understand. Oh wait, um, no I can't, I can't RM. Port hack, the port hack heart. <laughs> there we go. Um. <laughs> oh dear. So we're breaking the heart, we're shutting down the heart. Slowly disassembling. <laughs> okay. So yeah, does that mean our version's gonna crash? My name's Bit, and if you're hearing this, I'm already dead. It also means Port Hack Heart stopped, and my scripts worked, <laughs> which means we're finished. Which means you've done it. <laughs> Doing this now was our last chance, I think. While they're in a rush to finish mm. it all, and not under the eyes of the whole world yet. So, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> if all's gone right, there's just one copy of Hackner left to delete. Mm. And you're looking at it. Yeah. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> Achievement unlocked Hacknet. Yep. Alrighty, well. That was Hacknet. <laughs> A game by Matt Trobiani. I'm assuming that's how you say that. Yeah, no, that was really cool. <laughs> it was a long time getting to this conclusion. I don't think it's a particularly long game, but I just took a long time. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that was really cool. I enjoyed the hell out of that. The the uh, fact that you were sort of working with a command line style interface with some basic GUI functionality. That was really cool. I've never played anything quite like that. Never played anything quite like this. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure that all of this shows so you can see all the developers. Oh, and these are the songs. I didn't unfortunately listen to any of the songs really because uh, I think it's one of them, one of the songs that played, the main song uh, that played at the start was copyright claimed, so the very first video got copyright claimed, so I stopped using the music, I, I had made it silent. The music that played just then where the guy was talking uh, was the only piece that was left after that. No, that was really cool. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> I don't know how long this episode's gonna be because I've been recording for over three hours, but hopefully I there's a lot of blank space that I can cut down. Uh, yeah. I wanted this to be the last episode because I didn't have time for more Hacknet on the schedule, so <laughs> I was finishing it today, come hell or high water. <laughs> yeah. Go follow all the people that that uh, made this game. I think that's they deserve it. They deserve all the recognition they can get. Recognition, sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you. Ah, okay. <laughs> it just came back on again. The end. Congratulations, you've just completed Hacknet. This started as a side project in a 48 hour game jam. Oh right, between friends. And people liked it so much that I worked on it casually for a while to produce a prototype version in 2012. The response was amazing, and though I ended that version with an email saying I was stopping working on the game for other projects, I couldn't stay away. <laughs> I kept working on it pretty quietly behind the scenes, and eventually, two and a half years later, it became what you just finished. Thanks for playing, and if you liked the game, or didn't, send me an email at matt at hacknetos.com and let me know what you think. Suggestions welcome. If you're interested in following more stuff I make, or want to bug me to work more on this or things like it, you can follow me on Twitter at at <laughs> or as at oran oran whatever thanks matt p.s the linked computer has a few secrets from the game on it take a look right credit server <laughs> over here scan <laughs> damn it i don't have admin pr uh, privileges damn it so you'd have to probe it and everything music changer oh okay <laughs> oh, okay so there's different music you can play on there yeah, it's got all the like sound waves and stuff, but I can't hear anything. There's no music on my end. Uh, right, so you can probe here. No ports required for port hack. Um, <laughs> for crack. And um, it's funny because I can still port hack. <laughs> Even though we broke port hack heart. So there's a bunch of stuff here. Uh, bin. There's all the different like system things you can do. Oh, and these are like more credit stuff. Thanks again. Ah, oh, Leet 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 is a server you can get to right from the start that has everything. Ah, interesting. I'm gonna connect to it. <laughs> Cheetah's stash. Yep. Let's have a look in here. Ah, I see. Yep. <laughs> has a bunch of logs in here as well. I'm not gonna read any more logs because I've run out. I, I really need to move on <laughs> to more stuff. But yeah, this is like a server you can just get to that has everything. That's really cool. Secretpath.txt. Yeah, I think this is talking about the secret path that's the... If you get in contact, in proper contact with Nex, uh, there's a whole extra section. All people and hackers can be traced and investigated if you look hard enough. Yeah, yeah. It's talking about that little secret side path. <laughs> multiplayer mode. There's a multiplayer mode in this? <laughs> okay. Wait if, uh, wait, if I go to my own system and then s type open CD tray, it legitimately opens my CD tray. Oh my god. And actually, if, yeah, if I do it like this, close CD tray. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even use my CD tray. That's the first time it's been opened in like probably over a year. <laughs> I saw the open and close CD tray things, but I did not know that that would actually work with my CD tray. I thought there might be a, a context in the game that you had to open someone's CD tray. <laughs> oh, and Fork Bomb is also for multiplayer, I see. Oh! I didn't know that. The names of computers and companies in Hacknet are procedurally generated from the list of possible main names and postfixes. <laughs> Oh my god. And the missions on the entry server are procedurally altered to be unique every time. That's fascinating. Yeah, and the last thing here is just a reference to the fact there's tons of little notes and like silliness uh, hidden throughout. Yeah, that's that's really cool. So, I'm gonna leave that there. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, this game was really cool. If you haven't played this game, I would recommend it. I would definitely recommend it to give it a try, especially if you're of sort of like a computer science mind. If you're doing computer science, this is like a cool side project game to play that just throws back to knowledge that you have already, probably, of um, systems. So, <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool to give it a try, I think. Whatever the case, if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. I don't think I have anything else to add to that. I think I've said everything I need to say. So, thank you so much for watching, and as always, 